Oh, it's starting the next act already. Act four, motion. So, if I did this right, this should be a scene we didn't get. But this still starts with the alarm clock. Well, yeah, obviously I had to wake up. Let's see. Raindrops and puddles is the music track, and the scene is a swing and a miss, so we are going the right route. The sound of my alarm is an unwelcome intrusion on a sleep that's been about to obtain. I doubt I've been truly asleep for more than an hour or two. Too much on my mind. Did I make the right choice, leaving the house yesterday? Did I manage to get Emmy to realize how unreasonable she's been? Am I ever going to manage to get her to stop being unreasonable? Emmy's mom gave me a new perspective the other day, but I'm still not sure that it's the right perspective. She was hurt when I left yesterday, too. I know that part of ending conversation is going to have to include an apology about that. Right thing to do or not, I heard her. I hurried down to the track, eager to talk to Emmy. I think I know what to say. Apologize for leaving first and go ahead from there. Unless, of course, Emmy doesn't show up. Which, from the looks of things, seems like it's the case. It's been about 15 minutes since I got here, and there's no sign of her. She's never late, not unless she's sick, which is unlikely. She probably just doesn't want to see me right now. So she's the one avoiding us in this timeline. To make my mind to take my mind off what that implies, I begin my warm-up routine and take off around the track. It clears my mind wonderfully. For the half hour I'm running, I don't think about anything but the run. However, once I've finished and Emmy still hasn't shown up, I get a little worried. With any luck, the nurse will know where she is. If nothing else, I can see what he thinks I should do next. So, last night didn't go too well, I take it. No, it did not. Oh, this is just his theme, the I-E-I-O-U. Huh, you already know? I have my ways. It's not as if I'd miss a distinct absence of your running partner this morning, now would I? No, I suppose not. So, what happened? Don't you know already? Maybe, but I could be bluffing. Perhaps I'd prefer to get your side of the story before I give any advice. I quickly fill in the nerd. I quickly fill the nurse in on the events of last night, and he takes it all in without changing expression once. Nothing about the whole event seems to surprise him, although he does seem surprised when I say that I didn't follow Emmy. Shows to talk to her mom instead, huh? Smart move, though I guess it didn't work out too well for you in the end. Well, I'm not sure Emmy seemed apologetic when I left, or at least she seemed that way until she put up her defenses again. The nurse sighs and spreads his hands in a conciliatory gesture. A, uh, definitely looking that one up. Conciliatory. Conciliatory. Yeah, intended or likely to placate or pacify. The nurse sighs and spreads his hands in a conciliatory gesture. Frankly, I'm surprised she let him down at all. And he's had a lot of practice on that score. You probably won't get anything else out of her. I don't believe you. Is that so? You think she'll tell you the whole tale? I'd swear I just saw the nurse's eyes glitter a little. His expression is the same, but he leans forward ever so slightly. I think she'll open up if I ask her without being an idiot about it. Yeah. The nurse gives his en enigmatic smile and then a response and shrugs wildly. Shrugs wildly. I think he's enjoying his role a little too much. Enigmatic. Yeah, enigmatic. Difficult to interpret or understand. Mysterious. The nurse gives his enigmatic smile and a response and shrugs. I think he's enjoying his role a little too much. He probably is. Uh, that was weird. It was frozen like a halfway thing between that. That's a real trick, isn't it? Are you sure you know the right way to approach the subject? I can guarantee that Emmy's going to try her hardest to pretend last night didn't happen. It will be painfully awkward for the both of you, but it'll also be a lot safer than trying to ask her for the whole story again. It could go worse this time. Are you ready for something like that? It sounds like a challenge, like he doesn't believe for a minute that I'd be so bold. I actually feel a little insulted by his lack of confidence in me. Of course, I'm ready for that. I love her. My Alvarez gets a raised eyebrow in response. Well then. Good luck. Let me know how it all turns out. Although he delivers his parting shot with the same smirk as usual, I actually think that the nurse wants me to succeed. 
I resist the urge to charge directly to Emmy's room to prove the nurse wrong. I've gone in half cocked before and the results were less than stellar. You don't say. If I'm going to do this, I need to figure out exactly what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it. Something to think about in class. Sure enough, by the time lunch rolls around, I think I have a good enough idea of what to say. I can do this. The bell rings and I grab my lunch and dash out the stairs, eager to be there first. I'll need to ask Rin to leave and I'll need to... Neither of them is going to be there. Hi, Sal. Sorry I wasn't able to run with you this morning. I overslept. Somehow both Emmy and Rin had managed to get to the roof before me. Oh, that's no problem. Last night was kind of draining, I guess. Emmy's expression doesn't alter in the slightest. Yeah, sorry about that. I've had such a weird morning since then. Oh, uh, really? And he proceeds to make small talk for the rest of the time. I can barely get a word in edgewise and soon find myself interjecting with a sort of back and forth dialogue that seems to have defined our early relationship. I'm not going to get anywhere on this problem during lunch, obviously. I can respect that. And he obviously doesn't want to accidentally pull Rin into things, and that's fine. Not that I think Rin would notice, but I can at least respect that sort of rationale. I try a different tactic. Hey, Emmy, what are you up to after class today? I think we could go somewhere for dinner or something. Emmy looks genuinely remorseful. Sorry, Hazel, I promised to track Kath and I to stick around at their practice and help some of the other kids with their form. It'll have to be some other time. Yeah, sure. Oop, the sky. I'm honestly not sure what to do now. Maybe diving into things the day after would be a bad idea anyway. She might still be angry about it and just not showing it. Besides, if she's got track team responsibilities, that's fine, right? I tell myself some variation on the scene the next day, then the next. I wake up, run with Emmy, during which she refuses to talk about anything but the run and what she was doing the night before, and then lunch, where we sit and make small talk until the bell rings. Her new responsibilities effectively keep me from seeing her outside of school. Maybe, just maybe, I'm letting it happen because it's safer this way, just like the nurse said. Except while it may be safer, I'm feeling more and more wretched. Emmy doesn't look good when I see her anymore. Dark circles lurk under her eyes. She seems more and more distracted. And I can't bring myself to just ask what's wrong. Because the timing never seems right. I'm absolutely miserable. <laughs>